Mike Levine is the mayor of fabulous Miami Beach. He's a successful entrepreneur who took the plunge, ran for public office, and won. Now he's here to talk with fellow community leaders sharing their passion and ideas for getting things done and making a difference in the world around them. Philip Levine is the mayor on Sirius XM Insight. I'm Philip Levine, and you're listening to The Mayor on Sirius XM Insight 121. And uh, these series of shows are all about amazing Floridians doing great things, great companies, great organization, which makes our state so fantastic. And I'm really honored today to have a couple of the greatest entrepreneurs I've met is Lauren and J.R. Rittinger, who have really founded and started some amazing companies like Market America and Shot.com and Motives Cosmetics. So welcome on the show, Lauren J.R. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Great. We got a husband and wife entrepreneur team, <laughs> which is it's always interesting, isn't it? All right. So first of all, to our listeners, I mean, the both of you created this incredible company uh, that's, I guess, all over the world. And, and you know, tell us a little about it and, and tell us how you how you started it. And you can take away whichever one you want. Take a shot at it. Here you take over first. <laughs> OK, well, oh, well, Philip, it's great to be on with you. We're both Miamians. And, of course you uh, are. You're a great entrepreneur. It's one of the things I've always admired about you. And as Thank a you. politician, that comes in handy. I agree. Uh, so, uh, you know, 20 some years ago, uh, almost 25 or 26 years ago, uh, I was very frustrated in marketing. It was kind of a cast system, very difficult to get new products out. And came up with this idea, and I would pr preach to Lauren about it, uh, that if you knew what everybody wanted, you could eliminate shipping and all the advertising branding costs and uh, ship it directly to them. Because uh, you could see out of 100,000 people, and it was – uh, 10,000 people that wanted widget A and 50,000 people that wanted widget B. So I could go and make a deal, add value to it, and have a, a, a solid customer base and then, you know, sell them other things. Sure. Uh, and so matching product to people or people to product, kind of, you know, we call right. it one to one marketing. But there was no internet back then. <laughs> That's so, right. <laughs> I called it uh, computerized marketing. And I really was afraid to do it, but Lauren kind of believed in me enough and irritated me enough that I took the jump. <laughs> and uh, you know, well, one thing that happened was we went out to a movie one night after arguing with myself all, you know, all evening. Uh, uh, you know, it, will it work? No, it might not. Nobody's ever done it before, going back and forth. Went to a movie, had an incredible experience, uh, lost ourselves in the moment, like, everybody's experience right i couldn't wait to get home and tell people about it you know, so they didn't act too impressed oh that's nice that's wonderful very happy for you but the next week when they wanted to go to a movie they remembered my effervescent enthusiasm uh, and wow so they ended up going to the same movie and they called me back and said you were right and uh long story short a month goes by, over 300 people went to that movie because of my big mouth, and I didn't make a dime. <laughs> right. I looked it up, and they, they spent $23 million promoting that movie. I said, Lauren, you know what I could do with that $23 million? And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of funny because uh, uh, she said, it's such a great idea, why don't you do it? So I bought Commodore 64 computers. Okay, I remember those. Hung them up on dial-up <laughs> so that people could find out what people wanted, report it in. We would go find the product, and then they would uh, uh, order it, and you know we, we would ship it to them. And so we started to build a database and a following, you know, in that way. And uh, we came up with a program which we call Unfranchise because <laughs> it's kind of like a franchise, but not a franchise. Right. Where you kind of. Uh, have the systemization, the blueprint to success, but eliminate the risk. No franchise fee. Instead of you paying us a royalty, we pay you a royalty. And we, we developed it into giving them a turnkey uh, shopping uh, business or online shopping internet marketing business, kind of like an Amazon, but we call it shop.com in a box. And it's a total turnkey system. Incredible. With a universal shopping cart and 
uh, 3,000 of our brands, unique brands, and 50 million of everybody else's brands and stores, and providing the, the fulfillment, technology, analytics, tracking, credit card processing, SEO, SEM, marketing, and that, they promote the site and do the customer care. Amazing. And we their footprint, like the movie example that I just uh, went over, and they get a residual income out of that. We basically extract a piece of the margin from every supplier and build it up. And today we call it the shopping annuity. Uh, it's kind of like Uberization of shopping, where we match product to customer, customer to product. They do a little assessment on where all their spending is. And we provide a service where we were able to find it for them online, get shipped directly to them, and a piece of the, and they get cash back, and a piece of the margin goes into an account for them and builds up and pays them regular checks. So, this, so, so Jared, this is incredible. So you you're, you guys are at a movie and you think, oh, the, you know, the power of recommendation, you know, this could work into shopping, and you literally created this this business where you you create. Or you allow people to become entrepreneurs. You create entrepreneurs. Yes, we allow them just by simply recommending products to people that they know, that they know or they love, or right. people that they don't know, and actually earn money from it. Now, let me ask you this: When you were building the company, is there still like that one product that you remember was like that hot product that like the tipping point? You know? It, yeah, OPC three. It's it's, a, it's our number one selling vitamin. It's still our number one selling product twenty five years later. Wow. Uh, antioxidant in a liquid form and a, a unique patented form and, and nobody has anything like it and I think people you know because our products are real we don't really go for me too products or products that are kind of trendy we go for long lasting right uh, powerful products and you know 25 years of the same vitamin you know it's that one that everybody takes that you know we tell you don't go to sleep don't wake up without taking that <laughs> and obviously they they, they listen and now, they yeah. so now, now how and with with cosmetics, you created motives. Tell us about that. How did that come about? Well, I think it's because, you know, I always, uh, my mother died at a young age, but I was always inspired inspired by her love for makeup and, you know, her love for beauty products. And I remember thinking when I was, you know, 16 or 17, watching her putting on her makeup, I used to think, you get all fixed up for this man to come home. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't understand that back then. Uh, and of course, you know, but I was in awe of uh, how she would apply it and the time she would spend and how it would make her feel afterwards. And I think that's what stood out in my mind more than anything, how it would change her confidence level, how it would empower her to feel better about herself, not on just the outside, but on the inside. Right. For me, that's what cosmetics did, because I've never been a big, I mean, we all love makeup as women. It's a huge business. It's one of those businesses that does well in a recession. Yes. Um, but I think it's more about, you know, what it makes feel like on the inside after you make somebody feel really special on the outside and, and it just grew, grew and JR really uh, you know pressured me because I had a huge following of people would say what do you use what do you do how do you keep your skin this way and Jared's like why don't you create your own line and I thought I already worked too hard as it is you'll never <laughs> you know but we did it and it's been a huge huge success with over close to three million followers just on our one me social media site on Instagram and just uh, really really taken off and it's just uh, been remarkable and it's just one of the many things I love to do. That is so great. I, I gotta add to that, Philip. Sure. Uh, she was buying other brands. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh I, you know, that's like, <laughs> why are you doing that? She says, because I used to be in the cosmetic business before this and, uh, you know, put together a, a line and she says, because it isn't as good as this and doesn't do that. And so, well, look, why don't you start your own line? And that gave birth to, to motives. And I, I got to tell you that uh, everybody has their talents, but this lady is a marketing genius, a branding genius. Absolutely. And so uh, aware and up to speed with what's happening in fashion and beauty. And, right. Uh, you know, that she's magic. And uh, so I got to cool. hand it to her. Now, now, let me ask you this. It's incredible to me. So you've, you've empowered all these entrepreneurs. The organization became and is huge and getting bigger and bigger. Um, I'm sure there are people that come up to you all the time and say, hey, I started 15 years ago, and look where I am today. Look what I've done for my life, for my family. But besides the success stories, I know you have so many of them, you've made it a point to give back. You all are so involved in so many charitable causes, and that's part of, that is, I guess that's part of the successful formula. It's, it's our responsibility. I think it's everybody's responsibility. You know, I always tell people, if you don't have 
money to give to an organization, give your time. Yep. So one, both of them are equally important. Obviously, as you know, if somebody's constantly busy like yourself or like ourselves, sometimes time is hard, so you have to give back with money. And I think that it's just our responsibility as Americans to, to pay attention to people who need more. Absolutely. And, and there's a bunch of them that you all are involved in. I mean, literally, you know. When yeah, I, it, it, there's so many involved with whether it be Make-A-Wish or Eva's Hero or, or Jennifer Lopez's foundation. And of course, you know, um, there, there's so many, they're endless. You know, I'm, I'm a real uh, sensitive heart to anything that involves children. Sure. So, well, you, know, you know, kind of what happened when you come to Miami, it's, uh, it, it, and you start to rise, it, it's kind of like Avon. You come to my party, I'll go to yours. Everybody <laughs> right. Parody, right? And, but it's our uh, way of socializing it, in Miami, and I love sure. it. It's kind of a At some point, you've got to make choices. But, you know, people collect things. Some people collect cars, art, um, money, real estate. We've always collected people. Yep. Um, and we have an incredible collection of friends that have risen in their own uh, endeavor or, you know, field of endeavor, whether it be sports or – and it's kind of like a, a, a club yep. uh, where we, we – nobody expects anything at all from each other, and they're not going to ask. Um, you know, we have fun. We have each other's back. But all these people, because I see it as kind of like a common golden thread – they have a cause, or they are giving back. They have a charity. And so we become involved because they're involved and passionate about it, and we want to help. So it's kind of like a, a network that is giving back and, you know, helping the world. Absolutely. You know, it's incredible because, you know, with your company, with your friendships, I mean, uh, you're surrounded by a lot of celebrities, a lot of famous sports people that I, I think, obviously, they're attracted to your charities, they're attracted to how successful and all the great things you've done for so many people. And, and I and I think there's an identification uh, that way and a, and a very positive one at that. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it's a mutual admiration society. I think people respect hardworking people, people who yep. are leaving it out there and not doing anything about it, but are very aggressive in their passions and and the you know pursuits and i think um you know people understand that my friends you know have such a great friendship with so many people yet they all understand we're all busy so if we see each other even like you right we've been friends for a long time when you see each other once yep. a year you're you're happy to see it and it's like no time has passed and yep. i think that's a real um you know it, it really proves that people who, who work hard still play hard Absolutely. So let me ask you this. The the mutual admiration. Yeah. So someone's listening, a listener from from, uh, Ohio, from Michigan, from Texas, and they say, wow, I I want to, how do I get involved? How do I become a a, a person that's involved with shop.com, Market America, Motives? I want to sell. I want to become an entrepreneur. How do they do it? I think the simplest way for somebody to become involved is to go to the shop.com website. Okay. Click on the button that you want more information or go to marketamerica.com, which we can also do the same thing there, and, and we'll connect you right away with a person in your area who can tell you more about the organization, can invite you to an event, or can come to your home, of course, and share the information with you. And then you can contact the company directly, and we have you know, a whole department of people who work with people and kind of coaching them from you know, start to finish, and we never leave people uh, in the process. We, we're always, we say well, you're in business for yourself but not by yourself. That's a great one. I like that. You're in business for yourself, not by yourself. Yeah, I'm always there to guide them, so it really works. And they get to come. So, unlike other entrepreneurial ventures where you have to invest a lot of money and not know if it's going to work, uh, uh, you don't have to invest a lot of money here, so, so that's not the issue. But even time is important. We don't want people to, to come on and not do well because they weren't cut out for it or they you know, get sidetracked or absorbed by a, a other things. So we have what we call a trial run, yep. a test market, where before they get in deeper than they can get out or have spent a lot of time or uh, you know, covered some overhead, we, we, we team up with them and give them a coach and show them the, uh, the, the track to run on and test it. Yep. for a month. And if it works and if they like it, then everybody's happy. Right. So, that's yeah, a that. that's a great philosophy. Well, I want to first of all, I want to thank both of you for being on the show because uh uh, Lauren, J.R. Riddinger, I mean, you guys are great entrepreneurs. You're great Floridians. You're great Miamians. And uh, uh, you really, uh, you totally symbolize the American dream. Well, 
uh, 100% uh, admire you and are behind you. And even though we might not be of the same political affiliation, we vote for you because you just uh, do a great job. Uh, well, 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 thank you both so much. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll see you at the event. Look Have forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm Philip Levine, and you've been listening to The Mayor on Sirius XM Insight 121. And you can follow me on Twitter at Mayor Levine.